You are listening to Baking Boss Kitchen Secrets with Naomi Rose, the food business talk show that shares with you the reality of what's happening in the food and hospitality industry. I am on a mission to help as many people as possible grow and build successful food businesses. Each week on this podcast, you'll get useful information, top tips, as well as what's really happening in the kitchen behind the scenes. Let's get on to today's show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, hello, it's Naomi from Baking Boss here on today's Kitchen Secrets podcast. How is everybody? Are we enjoying ourselves? Have we had a good weekend? You know, I always like to hear from you, so do hit me back with an email at Naomi at Baking Boss or send me a DM on Naomi Rose Baking Boss on Instagram or Facebook. It'll be great to hear from you. By the way, did you know I have a Facebook group to help support people in business in the food industry? be great for you to come and join so just hit me up on my Facebook page or just DM me and I'll send you the link to it because it'll be great to have you there and this is all about just supporting everybody and having somewhere you can go we can talk about all your issues and that's exactly what I've created it's just a place where we can all come together support each other in our own food dream businesses. So today's podcast I am going to be talking about something that sounds really really exciting It's systems. Yeah, I was trying to drag that up as best as I possibly could because it doesn't sound like the most exciting podcast episode you're ever going to hear. But the reason I have put this as part of my Bossit method to getting you food business success. So in my Bossit method, we have B stands for boundaries. O stands for organisation. The first S is self-motivation. The second one is systems. I stands for intuition and T stands for trust. So we're, today we're talking about systems. And there's a good reason why I've put systems onto this podcast. And I've talked about it in my boss it method and on my blogs and pretty much everywhere. Because having the right systems in place will help you achieve your goals. So if you think about it in a, let's take a car journey analogy. So you start on your car journey, you have and destination you have in mind to get to and you plan out your route of how to get there sometimes there's a diversion along the way but you've worked out how to get from a to b and whether you're driving or you're on the train or you're taking a motorbike whatever that might be you've got a system in place to get you there you know where you're going to stop you've planned for how long it's going to take you and you eventually get to your destination Might not always be in the way you've imagined, but you will usually get there. Unless, of course, you break down and that's a whole different issue. But (laughs) my point being is, is that in business, you'll have hopefully, and if you haven't, please do set goals. You'll set your business goals as to what you're looking to achieve at different stages during your business. But without having systems in place to get you to your goals, you don't have the direction. And that is why it's really, really important to have systems. So I'm going to talk you through seven areas of systems that will really help your business be set up for success and particularly in the food industry because in the food industry people love consistency. They love to know what they're going to get and if you're someone like me you'll go in and you'll order the same coffee or order the same cake every single time and you expect it to be the same every single time. That is why you need those systems in place is because you want your customers to know exactly what they're going to get when they walk through those doors or you sell them a cake or you serve them a drink. Whatever that might be, you need the systems in place to do it. Okay, so first, let's talk about processes. Now, this might still be I'm not in the corporate um, company anymore, but certainly back in the day when I used to work in the corporate companies, processes used to be a word that got thrown about the office quite on a regular basis. And me, who is a natural born, I mean, I love organisation, and I've talked about that on previous podcasts, but I am naturally a creative person. I don't like to stay in a lane and go through processes. It just sounds like something really, really dull to me. But actually, when I started running my own business, I realised how important having those right processes in place was going to be. And they don't have to be dull. That's the good thing about it. This is your business. You can make them as exciting as you like. But it's about giving your business structure that will mean that 
everything becomes much more efficient and easy to get right. So for instance, let's take a for instance here. So what process do you do you need to go to to order stock, for instance? And it might be that, you know, you have to you go out and do the shop yourself or you might have deliveries. But just this is one area of business that you have to think really carefully about. And it's something that is so frustrating if the process isn't in the right place. So in my in my cafe and bar, we were quite rigid on making sure that whoever took the last thing off a shelf, um, and I'm, I mean like in our store cupboard, not on the shelves if we're selling it, but whoever took the last thing out the store cupboard to be used, we wrote it down. Because that way then, when I came to doing ordering every week, I knew that we weren't going to be missing anything. And when you're in the middle of the service and you think, oh, that's just run out, I better run and get something else. It's not there. There's nothing more frustrating, particularly when you're working with teams. When it's yourself, it's a bit easier. But we always used to think, well, what processes do I need in place to make sure the stock gets here on time every week so that we can be best prepared for whatever the week might deliver us? And we always had a little bit spare in terms of stock, just in case that something went wrong, because the nature of business is if, particularly when we were in a cafe, so we would bake, often try and bake cakes first thing in the morning, but sometimes it just wouldn't work like that, or we'd have a really busy day and we'd have to put a cake on or scones on or something during the day to keep up with demand. And then you get food orders in, so then you get distracted with something else. So having those kind of simple processes, like making sure the stock is ordered in the right way from... I need to get the order in by 12. It was 12 noon on Monday for me for a delivery on a Tuesday. I had to make sure that I had it all within the right budget, make sure that all the staff had filled everything in that they needed, usually by the end of the weekend because weekends were our heavy customer time. So again, it was just having simple little steps that made life a little bit easier that just meant that everything just worked better. It was more efficient and it allowed less room for error, which errors cause a lot of stress some of the time. Of course, there were always mistakes and we always had a backup plan. So having a backup process in place also helps so that if something doesn't quite go to plan, we'd have an alternative or we would just have to communicate if something wasn't available to a customer. But again, it's just having those processes in place to make sure that everything works efficiently. Leading on from processes. So you know, thinking about stock order again, how you get that ordered in. It's about rinse and repeat. So it's just doing the same thing over and over again. It might sound boring, but it is your own business. So like I say, you can make these as exciting as you like. But certainly with, if it comes to cleaning a coffee machine, this is something that we would do without fail every day. And when you're on heavy coffee days, particularly on weekends, the machine would get quite dirty because you are literally doing hundreds of coffees. So you'd have to have a very stringent cleaning process that all the staff that worked the coffee machine knew. So they knew that at the end of the day, there are certain things that needed to be done and we call them end of the day tasks. I had a tick list and everything, but the tick lists were really important. Even though my more experienced members of the team knew exactly what to do every single day, when you get to the end of a, a long Saturday, you are shattered. And there is no, there is nowhere to disguise that. You are usually shattered because you've been on your feet all day. The queue has been out the door constantly and you cannot catch a break. You are literally running from one thing to the other, trying to keep on top of it. Hence why processes are good, because it saves a lot of flap and panic for your staff. But also, because you are particularly on busy services, you're having to go so quick, you want to be almost on that automatic pilot that you can be multitasking or taking orders while making a coffee and you'll know exactly how to do it. So having those simple things like tick lists and doing it over and over again every single day makes it so much easier and it becomes muscle memory because you can do it without thinking and you can talk to the customers at the same time, which is often sometimes a challenge if you're trying to concentrate and you put on the customer service smile. Kind of following on from the rinse and repeat is that consistency. So rinse and repeat means that hopefully you get consistency with what you're doing. But by having consistency in what your processes are means that all your staff will be replicating the same thing. So particularly for me, you know, I had 17 different members of staff 
at certain points during my business. So everybody has a different way of doing something. So they needed to have the right processes in place that they knew how to get it to what the business required, not necessarily to what they thought was right, but to what the customers would come to know and expect. And that way you couldn't tell the difference between if someone else was making something compared to another person. By having consistency, it gives your customers stability and they will come in time and time again because they know exactly how they're going to get their coffee every time. You'll be, um, I mean, it probably isn't like a complete shocker, but if you're anyone like me who loves either coffee or tea, I equally love both. But when I go to a coffee shop or I go out for a, a you know a cup of tea or something like that, I expect to have the same quality and standard every single time from that place I go to because that's how I like my coffee and that's why I go back. So having that consistency, having it across the board with whatever task your staff or you are undertaking so equally, if I was having a like a hands-on day where I was front of house or I was in the kitchen, I, w- I would be asking the staff to tell me how they've been doing it or because they would, you know, I let them let the different teams do their job because they were the ones that were best skilled to do it. Not me. I'm the business owner. I was making sure they knew what they were doing. And then I would double check with them before I did a shift to make sure that I had the right training and nothing had changed during that time. Didn't mean I was unplugged from my business. It just meant I delegated the right tasks to the right staff so they could put the right processes in place. That meant that all the staff within their team could have that consistency time and time again. And the customers knew what they would be getting. And that is so important because repeat business is such a vital part of many of the food industries. You know, you find that You'll have, particularly, certainly for me, I had just customers that would come in two or three times a week, sometimes every day, but they would know exactly what to expect every single day. And they would probably order the exact same drink and the exact same food every single day as well, because that's what they wanted and that's what they loved. And that is totally okay. So that is why consistency is absolutely key. And having all of those processes written down means that if for whatever reason your lead member of staff or you have to have a new member of staff come in and then learn those processes again, they know exactly then how to slot into the business and get it right. Because there's nothing more frustrating than you being a new person coming into a an organisation or a business or a company and kind of going... I don't really get how I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm going to make it up as I go along. You don't want that in business. You want to be able to give the staff the right tools to do their job in the right way that you envisage. So that is really important. So getting that consistency is key. So when you have the right processes in place, you're rinsing and repeating and you're getting your consistency. This is when, when you've created all of that, that's when you need to write your training. So training is really, really important and it will adapt over time. There is no harm in changing what you are doing and adapting to make it more efficient or if you've got a new product in that you need to use or a new method or a new piece of equipment, you might need to change it. We changed at the cafe, we changed the workflow and what I mean by workflow is how you know, whether people did table service or whether we did counter service several times, part, partly because of the COVID years, but mostly because it was analysing how we can make it work better for the team and the customer. We put training in place just to make sure that whoever, again, when new staff came in or when someone was new or even when we refined a process, We all went through the training. We didn't just do training once and then that's it, Bob's your uncle. We actually did it over and over again because, again, you tend to bring in different habits or things have changed or, you know, just generally when you have a an organisation or a business that's got several different people involved and there's there's sometimes changes, things just naturally change a little bit over time and It's more about just making sure we're all doing the same thing in the same way. So having that sort of training and that process written down, even like things as simple as the right cup sizes to use, 
or the right plates to use when you're serving food so that when food goes out, everyone will know how it's going to look. Or when your drink goes out, you'll get the right size latte compared to the right size flat white because that's what you've ordered. So just really think about what training processes you need to put in place. It might sound like an awful lot of work, but the time you will save in the long term and also you will get better customer rapport and better customer reputation and brand reputation because all of your customers will know that they're going to get the exact same thing every single time. And like I've already kind of mentioned already, it's about then reviewing what you're doing. So it doesn't have to be all the time, but you might find, and certainly when I was first starting out when the cafe hadn't been open very long, we called we used to call Saturdays Savage Saturdays at the beginning because on a weekday it was naturally a bit quieter in the cafe as you'd expect. Then Saturday would roll around and it was absolute mayhem. It was bedlam. It there were people everywhere and customers had things to do, places to be. There was their weekend. They didn't want to waste time waiting for coffees and drinks. So it's a completely different atmosphere. And also a completely different demand on the processes and systems that didn't work on a Saturday that worked during the week. So it was stress testing all of the things that we had in place to work out what worked most efficiently. I thought my my solution at the very beginning when we were first starting out was I just needed more people on a Saturday. And some days we'd have quite a lot of people front of house and in the kitchen, which we had uh, behind the counter and kitchen area was tiny. And actually it caused more confusion because there's more people in the mix. What we came to realise, certainly over time and as things became easier, it wasn't about the number of people. It was about how we went about and did things. So simple things like taking customer orders to getting their, their drinks, to making sure they get their food, taking them cutlery when the drinks went out rather than the food going out and then someone having to come back again, get cutlery and go back out. It was all little things like that that really helped save time and customers realised that we became much more efficient in time. One of the biggest things that we had people comment on, certainly at the beginning, was when we were running, particularly when we were doing table service early on and on a weekend, that they were getting slow service, partly because we were absolutely full to busting. So it's naturally going to be slower because of the volume of people compared to how quick we can be in a weekday. But again, it was just making slight tweaks, like making sure the cutlery goes if they're having food with their drinks so that you're saving a running back. And when people then having to go back to go and get cutlery, they often get caught by someone else needing something. So then they might forget. So again, it's all just making sure that all of the processes in place have been reviewed and refined and adjusted so that they work for your business, your organisation, whatever that might be, so that you can get the most out of your business as well. And it saves you time and money, which is, you know, particularly in the food industry, we're always trying to look at those margins and make sure they are the right in going in the right direction. And all of these little things do add up over time. One of the other things to remember with all of this is this is your business, it's your rules. So you can create them and change them. If something isn't working for you or you feel that it could work better, change it. There is no right or wrong just because someone over the road is doing it one way. Doesn't mean you have to do it your way or their way even. You do it your way because you will feel comfortable knowing that you are going to get everything right that suits your business. And the only person that knows your business as well as you do is you. So just remember that it's your business, your rules. So you create the right processes that suits your business, not someone else's. Don't get stuck on the comparatonitis. And I will talk about that on another episode. My final thought on the whole processes, systems thing to have in place is also quite a big one, but it's financial. It might be just making sure that you understand all of your ingredients, profit margins and all of those little extra bits of how much, if you have a member of staff, how much they're going to cost so that you have the right systems in place to manage your budget. 
I will, I, like I say, I'm a natural born creative and or much as I like organisation, finances is one of those things which I have to really drag myself to the table to do and keep an eye. I mean, I'm very good at keeping an eye on budgets and keeping, uh, you know, keeping money in my mind. Actually sitting down and doing the paperwork, if you like, is definitely not my fun place to be in. But having the right budgets and structures and all of those systems in place to manage your finances means that you won't get surprises unexpectedly. So forecasting. Know when your busy times of the years are going to be. So mine, categorically, when the sun came out, my business went quiet. It was no one wanted to be in the coffee shop when it was hot. It was just natural rule of thumb for me and my business. Other businesses did really well where I was because we were on a river. So anyone that had a river frontage were doing really well. Mine was not that business, but I knew mine would do better in the winter. So it's managing those, putting the right financial systems in place to know what cash flow you need at what points during the year that will really, really help you. So I hope today's podcast was useful for you, even though it sounds like a really dull one when you read the title, but it's a really, really important one. So just to recap, systems, why they're important, because they help you achieve your goals. They give you the direction you need. So getting those right processes in place, rinsing and repeating. So doing them over and over again so you get the consistency you need. Then put the right training in place so that everyone knows exactly what everyone else is doing and review them. Make sure you get them right. Stress test them, refine, evaluate, reset your targets, reset your systems that will really just make your business work always harder. It's always about thinking about where you can make efficiencies and it's your business, so it's your rules. So if you want to change them, change them, your decision and making sure you have the right financial structures in place to set you up for success. So that was today's podcast. I hope you found it helpful and useful. Please, you know, like I say, I always love to hear from you. So do drop me a DM at Naomi Rose Baking Boss or hit me up on the emails, naomi at bakingboss.net. Don't forget, I have a free guide out. So if you're just getting started out in the food industry or thinking about opening up your own cafe, bakery or food business, go to my website now and download it totally free but it's just some easy tips for you to get you going if it's just an idea that you're thinking about in the back of your mind i'll be back again next week with another episode of kitchen secrets everyone have a great week and as ever happy baking thank you for listening to baking boss kitchen secrets with naomi rose if you're enjoying this podcast then please do give it a review And don't forget to subscribe and follow. If you want to get some useful resources, then do visit my website, bakingboss.net. And give me a follow on social media at Naomi Rose Baking Boss and I am Baking Boss. We'll see you on the next episode.